Okay, so sometimes as a student instructor, you have to go and do some of the work that a teacher will usually do, like making copies of chapters. This is a study um, guide for each chapter that I have to go drop off into the printer station. The cause of rosacea is unknown. True. 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 Nearly 60% of aging is caused by rays of the sun. False. 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 Hey, is this all true or false? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> the trick in preventing occupational contact dermatitis is to use gloves or utensils when working with irritating chemicals. True. True. I true. Think I'll get that one right. Just a lay. A freckle is an example of a mark on the skin called a. Ula. <laughs> a. B. A uh, lesion. Lesion. Yeah. Really? What's a primary lesion? Really? Yeah. Ooh. All of the following are examples of primary lesions, except. The one that's in for K. What is that? What is that? Nodule. No, it's Q. Nodule. The one that starts with the K. Nodule. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say nodule. It's a key It's a key Yeah. A large blister containing a watery fluid. Ula. Sorry. Ula? Ula. Is it Ula? Ula? Basically, it's a watery fluid. A flat spot or discoloration on the skin is a... Macule. Macule, yes. A checklist to recognize potential skin cancer or changes in moles. Using the letter B to check mole... Borders. Borders. Oh. Borders, yes, borders. <laughs> the main food source for oh, antibacteria. I've seen that. Fatty acids. Fatty acids. Fatty acids. Which of the following is not an intrinsic skin aging factor? My strategy. Hmm? No. No. Genetic. Ooh, this has been the longest two days I have ever experienced in my whole life. But I'm going to start this video off with some future student instructor advice. One, always remain very attentive and very observant. Each teacher or instructor that you will observe has their own way of doing things. And if you pay very close attention, it just works. They always have complete control over the class. And even though they're everywhere at the same time, they are still still in control and they're at peace. Like they're not like overwhelmed or like freaking like, oh my gosh, this student is asking me this student. Nope, they're just moving with ease and you know, just real good finesse. Um, secondly, when you're working with the students, um, be prepared for them not to always want you to help whether that may be because they think they know it all or just because they may not feel comfortable with you helping them so don't get offended if like you ask if they need help but then they ask another i mean they say no and then another teacher comes and then they let the teacher ask don't get offended by that because they just don't know you you know and they want to have come they want to work with someone that they already have a relationship with basically um I also wanted to tell you guys to never be afraid to voice your opinions because um, sometimes like when you voice your opinions, it can be either received with like, oh yeah, or what? So just remember like if you see like, oh my gosh, that could just work out so much better if you did X, Y, and Z. Always share your wisdom because that's what you're there for. You're there to observe and to be attentive and you're also there to share information because these women and men are going into the career where they're going to be working on people and they're going to need to know more efficient ways to get the same result you know and even some of the instructors um really do enjoy like you just telling them new things that they don't know but anyways i hope that you guys enjoy these next few clips i'm with the advanced one students in their theory class and they are covering color my favorite pretty hard to be in the air business and make a good living and not get into chemicals of some sort. I mean, there are those who specialize in cutting and that's cool, okay. But it sure is a whole heck of a lot easier to make money with color than it is with just cutting. So. All right.
need to talk about the structure of hair a little bit before we get into color. Conditioning is probably 75% of good color. It's really critical. So let's look at three parts. What's the outside? The color. The color. Oh, okay. uh, same protein structure as your fingernail. Okay, it's clear and translucent. Okay, it's like shingles on a roof, right? Okay. It has the ability to do, to do what? What does texture have to do with hair color? How well it absorbs the density. That's kind of what we've been talking about. Uh, porosity. Okay, remember, porous hair holds water, right? Yes. Okay, it's that as we damage it, it starts to hold more water. Okay, that affects our color. Um, got new hair, we got ends or old hair, right? Which one's going to be more porous? The old hair. Yeah, the old hair, right? Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, it's going to be more porous. It reacts differently, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So we have to be aware of that. Uh, if somebody comes in, they've got four inches of regrowth and four inches of old color, okay? We have to treat those like two separate heads of hair, don't we? Yes. Because it is. It's two, 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 two different types of hair. Okay, remember the color wheel thing? Yes. If you look at a rainbow, white light gets refracted by prisms and rainbows and water droplets, okay? And the, phys the, the physics folks tell us it breaks down into these rainbow of colors, okay? And from that, we do what? Primers. Primers. Three primary colors. Primary, col primary colors can't be created with other colors, they just opposite, okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now, Knowing primary colors, knowing the color wheel is critical if you want to be a colorist. Okay. You can't just guess at it, you can't you can't go look it up. You have to know it, sleep it, and dream it. Okay. So if you don't know that, you're just handicapping yourself. Secondary colors are created by mixing two primary colors. colors. So if we mix uh, red and yellow together we get and Red and yellow together yeah. from each other yeah. on the color wheel. So we got Detroit Tiger, or excuse me, Detroit Tigers. Uh huh. Easter. Easter, yeah. Christmas. Easter, okay. Okay, that's how you can remember them. Dude, okay. I'm okay. telling you, that's the way to remember. I never. One more formulated. Okay. The levels. Okay. In, in America, we use one to ten. Some European countries use one to twelve. But it's really just a way for you and I to talk about how light or dark it is. I decided to swatch the new brand. It's called Uma. It's a beauty makeup brand that is founded and created by Sharon Chudder, a Nigerian-born beauty industry executive with an impressive resume, I might add. Go look her up if you have a chance. The brand's beliefs and values are self-expression, colorful living, African pride, empowering tribe, inclusivity and beautiful rebellion uma means beautiful and they believe it starts when you decide to be yourself hope that you guys enjoyed the swatches if you would like to see anything else just let me know so as you can see the advanced one enjoy their color class they did have a lot of questions for the color class which is really great because i feel like you know when people are retaining information or when they're interested when they continuously have more questions about what's being taught um color theory is not something that you learn all in one day it's something that you learn bit by bit but you continuously learn it and even throughout your career you will continuously learn color theory over and over and over and over and over and over again it's something that we use every day all the time whether you're in the beauty industry cooking anything that's how like when you see clothing together like what makes things look appealing and what doesn't you know so we use it all the time it was so amazing they had a really good activity to do I wish I could have recorded that for you guys but I was um, helping them with the activity and I just couldn't record and try to help because I like to be very attentive and very hands-on and not so focused on recording every single doggone thing but I hope that you guys enjoyed it also I did slide in a few uh, videos of me swatching the Uma Beauty eyeshadow palettes and the sticks and the lip glosses I did not do the foundations or concealers just because I really didn't want to 
and um the lipsticks i didn't swatch because i kept going back and forth about should i or shouldn't i and to be honest i was thinking about the time that i had and i wasted too much time doing something else so i wasn't able to swatch the lipsticks like i wanted to but if you guys want to see me swatch the lipsticks i definitely can do that for you um but i do encourage you guys to get out and go swatch them and try to find your color and see how you really like it um, my co-worker had on the lipstick and she loved it. It looked beautiful on her. She was like, it feels like I don't have nothing on. I was like, it looks really pretty on her. It's so pretty. Anyways, I did want to close out this video by saying one thing. To encourage you all to work with what you have. Um, some of us were born in certain situations. Well, all of us were born in things that we didn't have any control in, over. Whether you were born well off or just dirt poor. Just don't get so caught up in where you came from that you get distracted by that and you either get down on yourself and you're not willing to work hard to achieve more or to do better than what you already have you know there's two different two words that people always get confused and that's complacent and contentment and people use them interchangeably as if they are synonyms to one another they are not you can be content and at peace with where you are and still striving for more complacent is just you being lazy like you not even trying to do anything you might be making excuses for why you can't do this and why you can't do that but to be honest the truth really is even if you have more you will find another lie or you will find something else that you need more of and it's like we always find so many excuses as to why we can't do something but we never look at what we can do right now like if we really started to work on what we can do right now with what we already have we will be so much more happier and so much more at peace and we will have a lot more things accomplished than what we do now um if you see like some success stories you always hear about people like starting with their companies off with small money with only the money in their pocket or with um, one girl, she said that she had two shirts. She wore one, sold the other, took the money from the shirt that she had, and she flipped it into buying more. And it's just, they're using what they have, and now look at where they are. And it's like, maybe they did have points where they were... Um, complaining and fussing because we all have those moments but don't stay in that moment fuss vent complain do whatever you got to do but get out of that and go and like okay you know what look at your resources what do i have right now if you got a library and a library card that's one great um resource that no one can ever take away from you unless you got a lay fee but those types of things can i be able to go to school do i need to go to school um Am I able to go to school without me having having to contribute anything? Do I have people around me that are willing to be a resource to me, whether that's them lending their time, their money, their connections, anything? Like, start looking at what you have and what you want to do and work from there. Stop looking at, oh, I ain't got $10,000 look you ain't gonna be them you gonna be yourself so work on what you have um i hope that you guys take that into consideration and stay motivated i will see you guys sometime either later this week or next week i'm really not sure um like i said before i'll be in class with the basics girls hopefully i can record if i can't i'll just have to tell you all about it see you guys next time